In this video, I'll show you how you can utilize the uh, available models uh, free for download from 3D Warehouse, which is a repository for um, SketchUp uh, objects people upload and save, uh, as well as manufacturers, um, and um, uh, how you, we can uh, import that into Revit as a usable family and, and change the material so things look proper inside of Revit. So the first part of this, I'm just going to cover how you download something from 3D Warehouse. So uh, it's important to have an account, so you probably want to uh, create an account with them. And then if you search for a particular model, I'll just type in chair. Um, you'll see all kinds of chairs. There's a Barcelona chair, for instance. Uh, scroll through this and find something you want to use. Let me just see if I see something that looks good to me. Uh, be careful, a lot of these chairs are user-created without much thought about real proportions and shape. Um, they're just sort of cartoony looking in nature. Uh, however, other chairs are really well done, so you kind of want to um, look at them carefully and decide if it's the right thing for you. Uh, and make certain you're aware of what you're downloading in terms of how it might fit into your scheme um, or into your scene that you're creating. Uh, I'll go with this one here. I like this. This is a simple um, Ames chair. So I'll download this, and then I have some options here. Uh, I found that often if you get the latest version of the model, it doesn't like to import into Autodesk products very well, so I'm going to go to the SketchUp uh, version of the file, the 2017 model version. I will save that to a uh, project folder, and I will call this Ames uh, Chair. There are many different Ames chairs. I could have been a little more descriptive on that. This is one of the tulip type chairs um, or plastic molded chair. Um, and that's done. So I'm ready to um, make this thing work inside of Revit. So what I'm going to do is pause the screen temporarily. And then when I return to record it, I should be in Revit. So hang on here while I change gears a little bit. OK, uh, I'm in Revit now. and. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start a new family for this particular chair. So I'll just go down to my family templates here, select new. And then for the category of family, I'm going to select furniture. So scroll down the list and look for furniture in this case. So I'll select furniture and open it. And then you can see uh, I'm going to be shown the reference level view um, by default with these two construction planes that define the origin where they intersect <coughs> of this file. So now what I'm going to do is import the um, um, file we just downloaded. Um, Revit likes to think of, of SketchUp files as CAD files, so click on the Import CAD button. And then, of course, go to uh, wherever it was that you saved your file to. Uh, you'll want to pay attention to the file type selection here. Right now it's looking for DWG files by default. It likes to play with drawing files, AutoCAD drawing files. And in this case I want to drop this down and bring in a SketchUp file. Do notice though that you can bring in Rhino files and ASCII SAT files as well, as well as MicroStation DGN files, AutoCAD drawing exchange format files, or DWG files. <clears throat> we'll select the SketchUp file format. I'm going to leave all of these uh, settings as they exist. And here is the file that we just uh, downloaded. So I'll go ahead and click Open. And now you can see here is the chair that's been imported. I'm going to switch to a 3D view so we can just confirm that that's what we expect to see. Orb it up a little bit and just pay attention to all the parts on this chair. So I can see it looks like it's fairly well modeled. I should get some pretty nice looking renderings out of this particular model. So pay attention to how things go together, see if it looks reasonable to you, if it's well crafted, and then I would recommend using it in your project if you want to. So the next thing I want to do is think about materials. Now this is one object, and you can see if I click on it, there's not much properties here I can edit. Even if I get into the, uh, into the edit type functionality, you can see nothing really here to work with. So um, I could try to explode this, and often when you explode things, some of the geometry will be preserved. However, uh, if you explode it far enough, typically you will find that a lot of geometry isn't able to be exploded and it will disappear. So to control the materials on this, 
we're going to do something a little bit different. You'll notice if I go into a shaded view, this already came through with some kind of material supplied to it. Uh, it might work just fine the way it is if I were to now import this uh, or insert this into a Revit or load it into a Revit project file and render with it. Might work just fine. But if I want to change the materials or really have better control over these materials, I might want to actually use uh, Revit materials to do this. So uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up to the Manage tab. And then I'm going to go to the Materials tool. And that will bring up the Material Browser. And this will list in it all of, the, all of the materials that are in use right now in the file, because I believe that's what it's saying. Uh, I'll say show in use. And you can see here all of the materials that are in use in this template. Now, it doesn't mean that you can see what these materials are. They might be being used in, in the template in some way that's unbeknownst to you. But still, there's some important things to look at here. Most of these, if you were to compare this to what it looked like before I brought that chair in, would exist except for these ones here. These are new. These were brought in from this object. So this is where I can actually go in and actually start to control these materials rather than using the materials that came in and the sort of translation of them into Revit from the SketchUp uh, uh, model, I can actually go in there and actually customize these materials now. But unfortunately, by these names, I have no idea what they're, what they're really pointing to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of these materials. And then you'll notice there's identity graphics and appearance. Appearance controls the actual bitmap if there's an image map to it. Um, but in this case, graphics is what you see when you're in a shaded or um, a view that is um, uh, simplified for, for in the visual display of, of this. So what I'm going to do is just to identify what this color A05 is controlling. I'm going to temporarily turn the color to a bright pink, and I'm going to click Apply. Ah, now I can see that that's the chair back. So I'm going to right-click on top of this and rename it, and I'm going to call it Plastic... Uh, let me do it this way, chair, seat. Okay, so now I know for sure what that thing is. Now I can actually start to control this a little bit better in terms of the Revit materials. I know I want this to be a white plastic, so I'll click on Appearance now. And here's the default asset for the material right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this with a plastic material instead. So I'll click on this button, that will replace it. I can search using the search tool up here for plastic and this will show me a whole bunch of different materials that I could use. Um, they have different properties so you'd want to take a look at them. You might then find a particular plastic that look like one you want to use. I don't want anything too shiny so I think I'm going to go up here and grab this ABS white plastic. And I'll double click it and now you can see if I close this that chair seat has been assigned that material now. However, um, that you don't, you'll still notice that it's pink right now, and that's because in graphics I changed it to this color. What I can now do very quickly and easily is use this little checkbox here to tell it, look at the image of this, and whatever color is the image, use that for this re for this view here. So now if I click apply, you can see I have this white plastic material applied here. So now I'm going to do the same thing for these other two materials. I'm going to say, well, what is this color M04? I don't know what that is. Let's find out. Let's just set it to bright pink temporarily. Click Apply. Ah, it's these little bits of hardware here. Good. Well, now I know what that is. So I'm going to uh, rename this. I will call it Hardware or Connectors, whatever you want to call them, Bolts. Um, and then I'm going to go down to, actually I'm going to rename that just so it, it occurs next to my other one on the list. I'm going to call it Chair Hardware. Um, and then I'm going to go to Appearance and I'm going to replace this asset with another one. And this time I'm going to just type in, um, I could type in Metal if I wanted to and see if there's a particular metal that I liked here. Uh, but in this case, um, because I'm not really too concerned about it looking like metal, I'm just going to type in Black and see what we get. I could use black paint, that would work fine, um, but I think, oh, I like this one, this black matte plastic I think would look nice on that chair. So I'm going to double click this, and load that in there, um, close this now, um, and now you can see if I go to appearance, I actually have this asset in here. So let's take the next one. Here's 
color M09. Let's do the same technique. Ooh, let's go back this one. I forgot to do this. Uh, let's go back to this one now. Um, and again, go to graphics, change it from some color to a bright color that stands out. Click apply. Ah, so these are all of the rods inside of here. So I'm going to do the same thing for these ones. I'll rename it and I will call it chair rods and then go to the appearance tab. Um, I'll replace this asset and I'll do the same thing. Black and find that same material I used before. I liked it so much. It was right here. And then close that. And so now these have the same, there's basically a duplicated material, but that's kind of the approach we have to take here. And now I can go to graphics and say use rendered appearance and apply. So that's starting to look pretty nice. Um, and the last thing I have to hunt down, obviously, are these legs. So if I look at these names here, I don't see any more of those. So it has to be some other um, object or, or material in this list that looks out of place. This one to me looks out of place. So I'm going to change this again to bright pink. And then click apply. And ooh, that didn't work for that one. So it's obviously something else. Let's see. Uh, Poche. Um, wood veneer. Must be this one. That doesn't sound reasonable to me at either. So I'll again change it to bright pink click apply and aha there it is so that's the wood one so now I can go ahead and right click on this rename it and I will call it chair uh, legs now all of my chair materials are adjacent to each other on this list that's why I did it that way so I can easily find them and then I'm going to go to the appearance tab on this one uh, replace this asset and we'll just type in wood for our search tool and then I'm going to try to find some wood material that seems reasonable to me. Um, I'm trying to avoid anything that's got planks on it like this, like a, a plant floor planking. Uh, this looks nice, this birch, I could pick it. Um, yeah, I like the, the birch semi-gloss, I think would be nice. Uh, yeah, I want to stay away from those. Ooh, that would be nice too. Oak semi-gloss looks like it could be nice. Uh, I'll go back up to birch. Where'd you go, birch? Yeah, I'm going to go to the birch semi-gloss. And then close my material asset browser. And uh, again, I'm going to go to graphics and tell it to use the rendered appearance. You'll notice what will happen is it will sort of approximate the color of the, of the bitmap image that is here for those legs. Um, so now I actually have material set on this thing. So now that all looks pretty good to me. I'm happy with the way the chair seems to look. So now if I go here to realistic, I can in fact see now actual wood grain materials and things on these objects and everything looks much better to me from a material standpoint. So to tell if it's really going to work here, we have to use this in a project. So I'm going to save this as a family. I will save it to my folder and I will call it Ames um, Molded plastic chair. Probably has a model number. If I, could, if, I, if I could determine that, I would probably use that name instead. Uh, click Save. Now I'm ready to use this in my project. So I'm going to start a new project. New project. And I'll just use the architectural template. Click OK. And now I'm going to go back to my chair. And now, because I've, I've got a name on it here, um, I can just load this directly into the project from here. You have two options. You can load into the project or load and close this file. Um, if you think you're going to need to go back to here and make some adjustments, you probably just want to load into the project. Um, if you don't think that, and you've already got this saved with a, to a, a, a location with a, with a good name, then you can simply load into project and close. Be aware that if you don't first save this with a name so that it has a name and you can see the name right up here, what will happen is it will just say family one up here or family two, whatever you whatever you recently created. Um, and when you look in your project browser under families, it will just be called family one or family two. You can always rename it within the project at that point by right clicking on it in the project browser if you wanted to. So I'm just going to load this and close this file into my project.
Now you can see I don't have many things to work with here. And lo and behold, there is my chair. Let's go ahead and place a few of them in here. And I'll tab our space bar to move this one over here like this. So you can see I'm setting up a dining room table of some sort. It looks to me like some sort of a configuration here. And I'll just line these up nicely. These all do have reference planes inside of them, so you can, in fact, dimension these if you want to. I'm not going to put a table in, but it'd be nice to have a floor, so let me just go here real quickly and put a floor in here, and then we'll do a quick rendering to see how things look. So I'm just going to use a um, concrete floor uh, for this just real quickly. Let's give me a, a nice big area here so we can cast some shadows. Uh, check. And let's put a camera in here. Um, go up to my camera tool. And I'll just put a camera in here like this. So now you can see we have a view here. I'm going to adjust the view a little bit. Um, and now if I go into realistic view, you can see that looks pretty good. If I turn on my shadows, you can see that everything's casting shadows nicely. And now we'll go ahead and see how it actually renders. So I'll actually go to my render tool and look at the dialog box. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, so I'm just going to render it with a medium level quality here. Uh, exterior sauna only is fine. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's going to be fine. We'll just render right here and see what we get. Render on the screen. Shouldn't take too long. And so there you can see our, our Ames chairs uh, rendered. You are getting a little bit of tessellation exposed on these. Um, you could blur that in Photoshop or something if it was really objectionable to, you, to your work. Um, but you can see that for very little effort, really, on my part, I didn't have to model this chair. Uh, I was able to create uh, what looks like a pretty reasonable and usable chair for rendering purposes uh, inside of architectural or interior spaces. I hope that explains um, how to do that process and that workflow, um, and I um, hope you have fun giving it a try.